So I was recently offered a job with my electrical engineering degree for $130,000 and I turned it down and actually declined all my offers. I'm graduating in six months and I legit have no job offers. And the reason for that is because I am about to get a PhD in electrical engineering. Now you might wonder, well, isn't the whole point of getting an electrical engineering degree is to take it and get an electrical engineering job with it? Why else would you get an electrical engineering degree? And this is where I think people don't understand how underrated electrical engineering is and the type of skills that you can develop that can transfer to other areas. You see, when I was an undergrad, like in my first and second year, all I really wanted to do was just get an internship get a job like nine to five, make, I don't know, like $70,000, $80,000 a year and just chill and then go home. But ironically, the thing that happened to me was the electrical engineering degree. And deep down, I knew I wanted to do something more with my life. I just didn't have the mental toolbox nor the skills for it. And it was the electrical engineering degree that I got that upgraded not only my skills, but also my beliefs and opened up my view on what's possible in this world. And I really see that degree differently from how most people see it. For example, people will take circuits and programming classes and embedded systems and energy systems and they will only take away from it the skills that apply to these fields. But when I was taking those classes, I could not help but relate them to everything I was learning in life in general. For example, mechanics taught me to isolate variables, solve for variables, and not give up on a problem, and that every problem is solvable. And while this applies to problems that look like this, it also applies to any problem you face in life, or in career, or in relationships, or in any area. So the attitude I learned in mechanics was not just about problem solving in the physics realm, it was in the real world realm, which is based on physics, funny enough. Electromagnetics taught me how to be imaginative and how to paint pictures in my head because you cannot see electric fields and you cannot see magnetic fields. The only way for you to truly understand them is to imagine them in your head. And that was a scale that I had to develop. And now I'm very good at this scale of having abstract thoughts. I can imagine entire projects in my head without having to put them down on pieces of paper. And the electromagnetics class I took shaped that in me. In fact, practicing imagination is so powerful that even Nikola Tesla in his biography wrote that he would imagine entire projects from start to finish in his mind before he would go and execute them in real life. And I just don't think people understand how powerful that is. Circuit analysis taught me to be logical and rational and follow a problem from start to finish in a logical manner, not the way that you would do it in algebra or in high school, but in a way that is visual and applicable to the real world. In signals and systems, I learned that inputs determine outputs through a system. And while that may sound simple and intuitive to most people, I don't think people understand how powerful that concept is. You can take any system and just by observing the inputs, you can make predictions on what the outputs look like. And likewise, by looking at the outputs of the system, you can make predictions on what the inputs look like. And this does not only apply to electronic systems or software systems, this applies to other systems, biological ones, such as you. Your inputs will determine your outputs. If I came and I looked at you right now and I was able to observe you for 24 hours, or maybe longer, let's say for like a week or two weeks, throughout that entire time, I am measuring your inputs. I am seeing what content you're consuming, what people you're talking to, what kind of things you're putting inside your brain. For example, what channels on YouTube you watch, what channels on TikTok you watch, whether you have TikTok at all or not, what type of books you read, if you even read, what you and your friends mostly talk about. I can, just by observing these inputs, Inputs consistently over a long period of time, I can make a very strong prediction on what your outputs are going to be and what your destiny is going to be. Now, obviously, there are things like luck and chance that we're not factoring in, but to a very large extent, your outputs in life will be determined entirely by your inputs. And that's something I learned in Signals and Systems. And then aside from all these things, what, what, I, what you get to learn also is the software. Like in electrical engineering, in a good program, you learn enough software to understand how machines work and to understand how computers work and to understand how to write commands to computers, how to read things from a computer. And you don't need to be that good of a programmer just to get this high level understanding that just gives you an understanding of how these computers work. And these computers will continue to shape our world and they're becoming very, very powerful day by day. But with an electrical engineering degree, you can get an understanding of that. And this is what I wish to highlight with what I started with is the reason I'm turning down these jobs is they're only capturing a small part of what I think I can do with this degree, the skill set that I can do with this degree. Now keep in mind, I've done seven electrical engineering internships to reach this level of awareness. It's gonna take time for you. So do not expect that from your very first year, you would reach such level of awareness. So you should jump on opportunities. You should work on projects. You should try to do internships and you should try to get a job in electrical engineering as long as it's the one that you think actually suits you. And if you have no other options, then yes, you gotta jump on top of it and take the first step and fight your way towards the one that you actually want. But the idea I want you to get is that these skills that you're learning do not just apply to your job hunt do not just apply to the thing you're going to do for a job this is you reprogramming your mind in all areas of your life and these concepts that you're learning if you figure out how to apply them in other areas of your life you're going to have such a big advantage now i did mention software and there's a big catch over there because while the mental toolbox from the classes that you're going to learn are going to serve you you're going to need to couple it with the right beliefs and attitude you're going to need to have the right operating system in your brain 
that's gonna take that mental toolbox and do cool stuff with it. And this is where you can change the attitude, essentially change the type of software that you write in your brain, which again, is based on the inputs. And that will literally determine all your actions. For example, if you think you're probably gonna fail because you're not smart enough, you probably will. But if you think, no, people have done this before, and if you can figure out the right skills somehow and ask people for help, you will probably get through it, you're right. There's a quote by Henry Ford that I love. He says, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. And this is essentially software that you're typing in your brain through your beliefs and attitude. You're writing commands to your brain and you're telling your brain what action to take based on the worldview you have and based on the beliefs that you have. Now this whole idea of beliefs and software that you write in your brain is very powerful and I actually made a video on the beliefs that I adopted and the software that I wrote for my brain that allowed me to get all the internships to get into a PhD program. And it should be somewhere over here, so you should check it out. I'll see you over there. Peace and love.